I'm going to show you how to set up an SSH tunnel, which lets you pass traffic from one host to another through an SSH session. So you start an SSH session between two hosts, and then you can send other traffic down there that's not SSH, but you don't have to open up any extra ports. It just goes through the SSH session that you've got established. Okay, so to show that, I'll, I'll use a few uh, little props here. I've got the corporate network over here, which is corporate laptop, um, some Linux boxes on the corporate network, and a firewall, which then goes out to the world, which is the cloud. So there's the internet there. And on the other side of that, we've got a home network. So we've got some home computers on, on the home network behind the little router firewall that you've probably got at home. Now, this assumes you've got SSH port forwarding on your home um, the router here. So that's fine. So that's all set up. Okay, I'll start off with a corporate laptop here, just a MacBook. So what I will do, if I just SSH the home machine as normal, I'll just go uh, SSH. One dot um, sixty-eight. That would be your internet address if it was in the real world, but I've just got two different subnets here for demonstration. So now I've SSH into the home Linux box, but that's nothing special. Um, that's just an SSH session. But if we get out of that, if I do that again, but this time tell it to listen locally on this laptop on port, let's say three one two eight, because what I've got over here in my home network. This isn't the SSH server, this is. I'm connecting to this SSH server. However, over here on my own network, I've got a proxy server, a web proxy server. So what I want to do is I want to get that laptop to use that proxy server. And the reason might be is because you've got internet sites blocked at work or something and you, know, you just want to use your own. So what, I can, what I'm telling it here to do now is listen locally on this laptop to port 3128 and when traffic comes in, send it to 102.168.1.63 which is this machine over here, my proxy server at home and we'll send it there on port 3128 okay so it looks the same like we've just got an SSH session to the machine here but the difference is now this laptop is listening on port 3128 and it will send it to your own proxy server so I'll check that out um, on the local laptop here, we'll just change this browser settings and set up from no proxy, we'll make a proxy and we'll listen on the local host, which is itself on that port 3128, which is the proxy port so now, if I do something like what's actually happening there is it's using the proxy at home and if it's your own proxy, you're not going to block anything so you can do what you want so that's a simple example of how to use um, SSH tunneling. You can also do reverse tunneling. Now, in the last example, we were listening on this host, oh, sorry, we were listening on the laptop here locally and sending it somewhere else once it got to the other end. But what we're going to do now is from this box here, which is on the corporate network, we're going to start an SSH session to your home network, but instead of listening here for other connections, we're going to listen on this one and send them back through to the corporate network. Now, on the corporate network, I've got a, uh, a web server here just to, just to have something on the, the corporate network. So what I'll do is I'll just exit and go back to the, uh, the laptop. And I'll show you the addressing scheme I was using on the corporate network. I was using 192.168.20 for the, um, the corporate network, just to show it's on a different network. So if I go to... Oh, now that I've killed that connection, if I went to Google Now you'll see an error because it's not listening anymore. Sorry, the laptop's not listening anymore. So I'll just reset that back to no proxy settings. Okay, and now it'll just go locally without any proxy. So that's back to normal. Okay, now on this corporate network, the web server here, 192.168.20.2. Okay, there's my corporate website on that server. To get to that from home, I mean, there's, there's firewalls and everything, let's just say that's something on the internet or some other service, uh, you know, it's blocked by their firewall to the world, you can't get to it. So, what we'll do, first I'm going to connect to this Raspberry Pi, just, just locally, okay, so, 1.20.1, just to get me on there, okay, so now I'm on this Raspberry Pi, nothing special. I'm going to start a screen, just to, just to keep it running so when I disconnect it'll still be on there. 
So now what I want to do is connect to the home SSH server. So I'll do that again with your external IP address that would be in the real world. But this time I'm going to do a capital R to set it up from the remote end. And we're going to access this web server, but I'm going to make it listen on port 1234. Okay, because I have to be above 1024 unless you're running as root, which I am, but you wouldn't normally. Okay, now I'm going to tell it to send that to 168.168.20.2 .2 .2 on port 80. Now that's the web server here, 192.168.20.2 .2 and port 80 for the web. So when I do that, I'm now connected home, but it's now listening for connections. There is some extra bit you have to do though because normally that would only bind to the loopback internally. If you're somewhere else on your network and you want to connect to it, you have to just change a bit of the SSH config. So, at the bottom of the SSH config, just put um, gateway ports is yes. Okay, that will allow it to listen to other hosts. So, that's just in the um, SSH config. Make sure you've restarted your SSH server. But I've done that, so, so that home system is now listening locally on port 1234. Okay, so I'm going to disk on this, uh, I'll just get out of that screen. Okay, now back at the laptop. Just to show you the network I'm on here, on this laptop, I'm using 192.168.20, that's the Ethernet connection. I'm going to disconnect that now. And and the power. Now I'm going to come over to the home network and I'm, how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to use uh, the wireless connection because the wireless is on my, my home network. So now, now I'm on the home network and I have an IP address of 192.168.1 so just showing you on the different network. Now on this Raspberry Pi, remember we're listening on port 1234 for connections that we're going to send to the web server. So I can try that now by going to um, the web browser and just doing uh, 192.168.1.68, which is this machine, port 1234. And there, we, from the home network, we're accessing a corporate website which is only internal on their network. So. That's how SSH tunneling can let you do some pretty tricky things. And you can add more tunnels too. You can just do more dash L and addresses and all that. And you can set up a few tunnels for whatever you need. And uh, it comes in very handy.